Today, the bourgeoisie and the social traitors are jubilating in Berlin. They have succeeded in murdering Rosa Luxemburg. Ebert and Shaderman, who for four years led workers to the slaughter for the sake of depredation, have now assumed the role of butchers of the proletarian leaders. The example of the German Revolution proves that democracy is only ever a camouflage for bourgeois robbery and the most savage violence. Death to the butchers! Vladimir Ilyich Lenin 1289-DR Hail and well met, adventurers. Welcome to Marxist Theories and Lore, the show that explores the background of tabletop leftism in an easily digestible format, so organizers can create adventures that fully fit within the canon of leftism, and workers don't have to keep 50 volumes of Manager Magazine with bookmarks on the game table just to understand what the hell the organizer is on about. Today we will be covering one of the greatest adventurers in socialist history, Rosa Luxemburg. Rosa Luxemburg was a human magic user born in Zamosk, Poland in 1221 DR. The region she grew up in was under the yoke of the evil Russian Empire, and she was a member of the Jewish ethnicity, which was under constant suppression by Russian authorities. Rosa struggled against the attempts to enforce Russian identity on Poland. She was an excellent student and received a highly contested space at a sorcerer's academy. She began her adventuring career in 1236 DR. She was brought in as a junior member of the proletariat party. Her fellow adventurers were attempting to bring about a general strike, however they ended up being brutally suppressed. Rosa was forced to go into hiding and eventually had to leave Poland entirely. She pursued magical studies in Switzerland, where she became one of the first women to pursue the Doctor of Economics prestige class. She became a powerful expert in many schools of theory, including abjuration, evocation, divination, history, and, as noted above, economics. She traveled around Europe for a time, joining adventuring parties for one or two quick quests, but eventually she ended up in Berlin. The German Empire was scarcely any better than the Tsar. If anything, the Kaiser was more effective than his Russian counterpart. His agents also held a portion of Poland in their terrible thrall. Rosa had ample work to do. She joined the SDP, one of the most powerful adventuring groups in the world at the time. She trained fellow adventurers. She worked with the powerful sorcerer Edward Bernstein on his constitutional reforms. However, it slowly became apparent that Bernstein's theory crafting held a terrible secret. He was not the kindly abjurer he presented himself as. He was a necromancer trying to sacrifice the revolution itself to charge his phylactery and transform into an immortal, unliving, unkillable lich. Luxembourg disrupted this ritual and destroyed the phylactery, severely deflating his power. She drafted the epic spell tome, Social Reform or Revolution, to prevent any further attempts by Bernstein to attain immortality. And since you cannot find relics such as the Eye of Bernstein or Hand of Bernstein in these late days, it's fair to say she succeeded. At the outset of the Russian Revolution of 1255 DR, she realized the import of the events unfolding and returned home to Poland. She joined the Red Banner Adventuring Group for a campaign. However, once the revolution itself was wrapped up by the Tsar's forces, she was captured by the guard. She spent a few sessions in prison until she was able to feign an injury and escape, making a circuitous path out of the Tsar's domain and back to Germany. Rosa Luxemburg's powerful divination spells revealed the looming threat of a coming war across all of the great European nations. She met with adventuring parties from across the continent. Lenin, who was only level 5 at this point, was much in agreement with her project. Rosa convinced the other adventuring parties that if their respective lords and masters brought a great imperialist war to the campaign setting, they were to disrupt war production. They were to attack their masters with a great general strike. This could be the beginning of the great revolution they were all building toward their entire careers. In 1264 Dale Reckoning, the war she was so worried about finally came. Instead of standing with the working class across Europe, against their own national rulers, instead the adventuring parties she met decided to team up with their own national bourgeoisie. Most insulting of all, her own SDP's members inside the German parliament voted unanimously in favor of war funding. Rosa and a few other adventurers formed a new adventuring party, the International Group. They agitated against the war across Germany. Eventually, this evolved into the Spartacus League. Unfortunately, in 1266 DR, Rosa was captured by the town's guard and imprisoned. These guards were much higher level than the ones in the employ of the Tsar. 
She still managed to have a few spell tomes smuggled out of prison during this, but she could not escape. The war raged on for years. It destabilized many of the nations involved. When a great revolutionary moment rose up to threaten the Tsar, the powerful abjurer Lenin convinced the Kaiser to allow him to return home, ultimately overthrowing the hated Tsarist regime. In 1268 DR, the war finally came to an end, with Germany defeated. Rosa and her allies were released from jail. With the loss of the Great Imperialist War, Germany faced mass upheaval. She made strange allies, such as the desiccated remnant of Bernstein still somehow clinging to its terrible mockery of life. The Kaiser was overthrown, and a representative democracy was built in its place, but this was not enough. This could never be enough. So long as the dictatorship of the bourgeoisie remained, Rosa's divinations inexorably told of an even greater imperialist war on the horizon, and the only thing that could stop it would be global proletarian revolution. There were months of unrest. Uprisings, strikes, pitched battles in the streets. Rosa's former allies in the SDP fielded armies of fry corps, monsters that had once been human soldiers but who had been twisted in the Great Imperialist War by infernal energies beyond their comprehension. The Spartacist uprising came to a head. The SDP unleashed the Fry Corps. The uprising was crushed. Rosa Luxemburg failed her death-saving throw on Deep Winter 15, 1269. Rosa Luxemburg was a true adventurer her whole life. So long as she had breath in her chest, she struggled for revolution. This makes her one of the most important worker characters to ever roll the die. And her theoretical work, exploring the theory school of Marxism, is impossible to overstate. If you wish to explore the legacy of Rosa Luxemburg further, you should read some of her spell tomes. I suggest you start with Social Reform or Revolution, The Accumulation of Capital, then perhaps The Mass Strike, The Political Party, and The Trade Unions. Thank you for staying all the way to the end. The Devil Inside YouTube wants me to tell you to like, subscribe, friend me on Likeface, download me on truth.social, whatever the hell, but I'm not your boss. If you really want to help, well, Join some kind of organization that's doing good. Salt a union. Do strike support. Work security for Drag Queen Story Hour. If you give to my Patreon, I'll send you there for you and spend more time doing the stuff I already do, but only do that if you have too much money and not enough time.